Hello everyone, it's Morris here and today we get some reveal of uh, what's going to come in Season 3 in terms of the runes and charms. But before I get into those new runes and charms and those changes with the existing ones, do note that these changes are basically for pre-Season 3 testing, meaning they are just released in the Origin Beta and for us to basically test and see if like, there are any broken things or if you know, some are strong or weak and then they might or probably will make further changes before or even during season three so of course don't base uh, any you know uh, financial decision on the content here just because there will definitely be further changes having said that though they you know definitely give us some good information on what is to come so yeah let's just dive right into the season three runes and charms that we've seen so far Okay, so first we have the neutral. So let me just hide myself so that you can actually see everything on the slide. So first of all is, um, yeah, so pure power and pure skill got kind of reworked in the sense that now they buff the ally instead of buffing the axe itself. So I think it's a good change. Um, but of course, they're rare runes, so meaning, you know, like the power level is really not that strong, but still, um, it's, I would say, usable uh, during rare era. And then, okay, so for epic runes, so we have a new one called Pure Luck. And of course, as usual, the pure the uh, epic runes are solo. And so for Pure Luck, it says when your turn starts, if there's at least two curse card in your hand and draw pile, draw one additional card. Otherwise, this axis card gains 15% bonus stats until your turn ends. So in a way, it's a tech against curse card, but it actually doesn't deal with the curse card. It just draws you an additional card. So I can imagine like there might be a team where, okay, you just want to increase your card draw and maybe finish your opponent off during your second cycle or something. And it allows you to basically draw into your attack cards, uh, even though you're going against curse. So it's kind of definitely attack against curse, I feel. Um, yeah, but of course there are cards that shuffles curse card into your own deck. So maybe that can uh, synergize a bit. Um, but otherwise, okay, sure, gaining 15% is not that much in terms of uh, epic runes as we'll see later because a lot of the existing rune has been buffed as well. So uh, we'll see whether this will actually get played. Uh, I think unless curse is everywhere, otherwise I don't think this will get played too much. Um, and then next we have energy shard, which now is an epic rune. And basically the only change I think is that it says when the battle starts, gain one energy fragment per unique Axie class in your team. So I assume that just means if you have three different Axie classes, so like maybe you have one plant, one bird, and one beast or something, then uh, you actually gain three energy fragments as opposed to one. Uh, so there's this like unique Axie class synergy kind of thing. Uh, or, but yeah, I don't know if this is good enough. Uh, okay, sure. Maybe there are some teams that just really value the three energy fragments at the beginning. But yeah, I'm not seeing that, so maybe they will buff this, but we'll see. Okay, then we have the Mystic Runes, and this is quite a big one, I feel. Pure Instinct, now it's a Mystic. And this is other allies' axis attacker has 10% bonus stats when played. But that's not it, it's because additional 5% bonus stats per unique axis class in your team. So of course, usually you want to run three different axis class if you run a Pure Instinct, and that would mean... 25% bonus stats and of course this will stack with other runes as well and charms effects as well so this is can be pretty crazy especially with a kind of team where you have like maybe one or even two supports axes and then supporting one either very aggressive like attacking axie dealing massive damage or maybe like a shield or something that you know an axie just a shield everything and very defensive either way um yeah i think pure instinct can yeah be i think it's a good change and a good way of you know, thinking about a good addition i would say in terms of like the uh, team building aspect of it so yeah i quite like this change and finally we have shady exchange and nothing much has changed other than in the beginning instead of losing three you now just lose two energy fragments so let's see if it's good enough i still think that this is a bit slow because it only really starts from turn four in terms of the benefit so yeah a lot of games really ends before that so yeah let's see okay in terms of the neutral charms 
Um, okay, in terms of the neutral charms, we have uh, three new ones. So Black Sage is the one that tech against buff uh, because uh, it basically adds this spell. Okay, so note that all these are rare charms, so it's actually pretty easy to get. Uh, but yeah, this one at the spell. Uh, so basically, it's like an Oranda, right? Uh, of course, uh, it has some downside. So all three of these new car uh, charms have card space that's minus 20%. But still, I mean, you can definitely put it onto some cards that have weak base stats already, or especially zero cost cards. So there are zero cost attack cards. Um, yeah, and similarly for the healing and shielding and so on. So yeah, I think this could be a pretty good tech for sure. Um, so okay, so Black Sage. Add this spell. Uh, Blessing removes one curse, which I assume means like one curse card in your deck. Um, so, but I don't know if it's from the hand or from the draw power or where, I'm not too sure. But uh, yeah, but I think it could be good against curse uh, if the curse is around. And then, yeah, we have final one of scanner, which is remove one secret. So, this one I actually don't like as much just because. Usually when you do your first hit, you'll probably trigger most of the secrets and it only removes one, I assume it's random secrets. Then the other secret will still be there, so I'll still get triggered rather. So that's why I'm, yeah, this one I'm not too sure. The other two, especially for the Dispel one, I think is pretty strong because a lot of people just literally run Oranga just to do the Dispel. So in this case, yeah, you can just turn any attack kind of around there. Of course, ones that can target any enemy would be ideal. So yeah, I think there's a yeah, Black Sage, I think, very strong. Uh, partly because, especially Season 2, or actually multiple seasons, uh, buff has been a very big thing. So now if you have Dispel and you have multiple ways of Dispelling opponent, I think that could be pretty strong. Okay, and then finally, uh, we have two small change in terms of the PP for uh, Energy Drink S and Scotch Tape now turns from 4 to 5, which definitely is a, quite a big nerf in a way, so you can't run that many tape anymore, so that might be, uh, you know, it might change how people you know, play, uh, or rather like, you know, in terms of putting their charms, so yeah, interesting change. Okay, next we have Beast. So for Beast, um, actually all of the classes, the way of something, right? So the way of Beast, uh, all of them change well with minor changes. So in this case, 10% uh, bonus damage to 15%. Um, so not much to say here. Uh, so most of the uh, runes really get buffed. So Dominant Predator um, actually uh, changed uh, in terms of uh, not buff but like a slight nerf I think because it used to heal 15 and now it just heals 12 and I think it is because uh, during the rare era it is really very strong right uh, so it's kind of toning down the power level just because it is a rare rune right and the power level is basically equivalent to like an epic rune I feel but I don't think this change makes too much of a difference but we'll see okay and then pendulum scale uh, goes from 15 to 18 so good change um, because there are a lot of uh, buff in terms of attacks, so the defense has to be buffed as well, I think. And yeah, you can see Reckless Hunter goes from 20% uh, bonus damage to 25. Of course, there's some downside as well, which is taking 10% more damage to now taking 15%. But usually, the Reckless Hunter, you know, actually usually don't really take damage. And by the time you take, take damage, like, it's, like, you usually would have dealt enough damage already. So... Yeah, uh, I think that's definitely more like a buff. So yeah, I think it's a good change. Okay, and then we have these other runes. So we have the Glorious Main. And now, uh, instead of doing uh, 10 bonus damage, uh, it actually goes to 6% per energy spent. Uh, which, yeah, I haven't really tested it out, so I actually don't know how it works, but I would assume. So let's say if you play a 60%, uh, 60 attack card, then usually, well, before it will basically become a 70 damage kind of card, uh, but now it is more about you know, six percent. So um, yeah, I actually don't know how like whether this actually is better because if it's six percent, there's only like three point. If it's a 60 attack card, with like only 3.6, right? Uh, bonus damage. Uh, so uh, that's why I don't quite understand about the per energy spent. Um, does that mean that turn or just that card? Um, yeah, I'm not too sure. So if you know, uh, do um, let me know in the comment. Uh, but there is some more synergy with this uh, rune later on, as you'll see. Well, basically, uh, in the, uh, there's a one charm, I think, that 
synergizes with it. But anyway, let's just look at the other runes first. Uh, Anna's Anger. Anna's Anger is now changed to... Well, I guess changed back to... Uh, gaining 2 rage instead of 1. Uh, so that's like, wow, uh, uh, interesting change. But the, I think that this is the more important one is that the rage on this axiom now grants 2 as opposed to 3 bonus damage. And that is quite big. I think 2 is still quite good. Of course, not as good as before, but I still think NS Anger will see plays just because of the synergy with still like the multi attack stuff. But now, of course, um, being uh, changed to 2 from two, 3 to 2 really hurts quite a bit. So maybe people will shift away from that. Um, but I think NS Anger with the Winghorn stuff could still be very strong unless they, you know, they change Winghorn. Okay, and then finally we have the new rune for beasts and it's called Brutal Fang and it's a bleed synergy and it says solo um, against targets with less than six bleeds turn this actually single and AOE attacks double the bleed turns on the target right so of course AOE is the best case scenario right so you basically just doubles the bleeds turn and then uh, if the basically if the target has more than six Bleeds turn or equal to six bleed turns, then it creates something called blood storms. And what a blood storm is is basically that it deals fifteen pure damage to all enemy axes and then reduce the three turns of bleed on the target. So of course it can be AOE. Then uh, I would assume if you do that for all three axes, then it'll be forty five AOE effectively. But then you reduces three turns of bleed. Um, yeah, so basically it's more like stacking bleed turns uh, for this kind of rune. So interesting concept. Haven't really seen this uh, before. So we'll have to see how it really plays out when you actually test the rune. Okay, then we have the charm. And this is a charm that I talked about. The synergizes with Glorious Main. And it is the charm with Mystic Charms. So are pretty hard to get. But it says this card can't generate energy fragments. So that's why I say it's like synergizes with it. Because uh, if you have Glorious Main, then it doesn't you know have any downside. And basically it says base attack plus 25%. So yeah, it's just a free 25% if you have Glorious Main. But of course, I just don't know how Glorious Main actually works at this point. So yeah, we have to test it out and see. Okay, and then a minor change. Uh, actually, I think most of the Mystic Charm for the classes changed from 5pp to 4pp. And I think that's the only change that I know um, for this uh, Hidden Razor. Okay, so let's look at Bug. So similarly, uh, Way of Bug changed from 10% to 15%. Uh, Cocoon actually made a, you know, had a bit of a change as well that I covered in a previous video. And then, okay, so we have Leech, uh, which now basically becomes an epic. Okay, so you can't play it in the rare era anymore because, yeah, it is pretty strong in the rare era. And the only change really is that instead of stealing four, it's still six. Um, yeah, so a very small change, but I think it's good enough as an epic. Uh, having said that, though, it's really just attack against, um, well, yeah, I guess really attack against uh, sustain, but. It can also be good just because now it deals 6, well actually steals 6 HP uh, from all enemy axes. So we are dealing damage, 6 damage is still not insignificant maybe in an AOE kind of build. But of course for AOE build you might not run want to run such a defensive rune but um, yeah, maybe we'll see. Okay and then we have Sturdy Fighter, a very small change again, going to 20% to 25% of the shield consumed. Um, to deal the damage, so basically allowing the Axie to deal more damage by consuming more, um, yeah, more shield. So, uh, because Surrey Fighter hasn't really seen play, so maybe this will buff it enough that people might play, um, you know, build something around it. And then we have Metamorphosis, and now it is a Mystic Rune. Okay, so first of all, it's when your turn starts, gain two cocoon. Okay, so that actually gains two cocoon was already pretty good. And it deals damage, so this is the important part. Deals damage equal to 10% of its shield per cocoon stack to all en uh, enemy axes. So that's per cocoon stack, 10%, right? That means if you have 10 stacks, which is the maximum, you deal 100% of its shield, all right? So basically, uh, because Cocoon now basically gives you 4 shield per stack, and this just means 
uh, yeah, you'll get 40 shield, right? That's a base level, and basically you already deal 40 AoE at the start of your turn. Plus, okay, of course, like, the cocoon has the retain and things as well, right? And so if the opponent doesn't deal with your shield, they will just take more and more AoE. So I can see that this can actually fit very well with uh, a sustain kind of build where you're just shielding right, and then keeping your shield and then using your shield to deal damage. Um, we'll see whether it actually fits into like a full sustain kind of thing or not. Uh, just because there are, of course, other ways like Tessels to use shield to do AoE damage. Which we've seen in previous seasons so still i think yeah we really have to test it out to see whether it works or not okay in terms of the um runes yeah there are more uh, bug runes and charms so this one so we have a new one i actually saved it for save the new ones for the, the last basically so for bug we have a new rune which is called fate maker and it says once per battle enemy cards discarded by this axie have their stats reduced by 15 percent so i think this is pretty strong because there are cards right where you look at the opponent's um draw pile and then you can discard them and now it can permanently reduce that stat so yeah i think there's a very strong disruption so but of course uh, you're sacrificing a lot in that sense because you're sacrificing like not buffing your own uh in that sense uh, but having said that though, uh, because usually you have some damage uh, buff or something, but uh, let's read the next part of the description which says your cards discarded by this actually have their stats increased by 15%. So yeah, uh, basically you can buff yourself, uh, but of course it's a pretty slow one because you have to discard it and then get it to the next uh, rotation. So that's why I say it doesn't really buff it, uh, buff your own stat immediately in a way because usually a lot of the charms, right, you just want to buff your uh, attack or buff your shield or buff your healed or something right, immediately. But in this case, it can be a bit slow because you are really, you know, yeah, it's very slow is because uh, you're also not making immediate impact in terms of the opponent's card because you're discarding the key card, sure, and reducing the um effects but then uh yeah they won't draw the card meaning they won't have the card until next rotation so they you actually don't have any impact on them immediately so this is why i feel like this card um, at this rune could be problematic uh, if the meta is very fast of course if the meta is very slow then this is an amazing rune i feel because uh you have multiple rounds and then you can just keep doing it uh, but also, it's actually quite difficult to make it work because you do have to have a lot of discard synergy. Um, yeah, but it might be basically one of the ways in which they push this discard synergy, which we, they tried in some of the cards, but might not have worked. Okay, and then finally, we have a Mystic Charm, a new one called Horn Drill. And it says this uh, the card discards one random card in the opponent's hand or draw pile. So basically, you put it on your attack card when you attack then it discards a random card for your opponent um so it's basically like a hand and draw disruption which i think is pretty good basically it's sim i won't say similar to uh there's this one card right the garnish worm that basically removes your um card from your opponent's hand but in this case it's hand or draw pile so sometimes it doesn't work as like a garnish worm so that mm, yeah but still uh yeah i think it's basically like a discard synergy thing because you can put this rune, uh, you know, fake, uh, fate maker, and then this uh, horn drill, and this should couple, right, uh, together. I would assume because uh, it still counts as the cards that got discarded by this axie. So in that sense, uh, I can see these two things coming together pretty well. Um, but yeah, but of course, definitely have to really test play it and see whether. How, how good this is but i think i quite like this kind of uh, play style where you basically are disrupting your opponent's game plan as opposed to i guess uh doing your own game plan or rather your game plan is to disrupt your opponent so pretty interesting that i don't think we see that much um in axi or well other than i guess curse stuff um okay and finally a small change um well i guess lazy snail go from 5pp to 4pp i think that's the only change with lazy snail 
Okay, then we have bird, uh, and then okay, as usual, we have bird go from 10% to 15%, so a small buff. And then we have frail egg, so it's uh, kind of like a new one in that sense. And it says when your turn starts, randomly apply weak for two turns to enemy axes two times. Uh, so basically, it's like, yeah, it's just hitting, you can mention it's like hitting two times the weak, and I assume it should be actually yeah i don't know because i was thinking it should apply to two different axes but i don't think uh, based on the wording that's how it works because i think it's just you know in a way like hitting twice and it could hit the same axe twice and that would be like four turns instead of two turns for if it hits the same axe twice that's why i assume uh it does have some debuff synergy but otherwise i don't think it's that strong yeah but yeah we c it's still not bad against aggro you know uh but i don't think yeah it's just not not good enough i feel Okay, then we have the Epic Rune, uh, which is Energy Guru, now changed to an Epic. And the only difference really is that uh, instead of 4 damage, now it deals 7 damage. Uh, yeah, I think it's quite quite good actually. Um, 7 damage uh, AoE, right? Um, per energy cost that's used. Yeah, and also gaining energy fragment. I think the energy fragment is a bit minimal. Uh, it's mostly about the AOE, but I think going from 4 to 7 could be quite significant. Basically, it's doing 21 extra damage in a way. Uh, if, of course, you run it in an AOE kind of build. So, um, maybe, maybe we'll see play. Still, maybe not strong enough, but we'll see. And then, okay, we have Sharp Talon. So, this one, uh, again, some small change. Uh, so because n definitely have never seen play, I've never seen this rune to be honest like in uh, S2 um, But basically the change is that uh, Yeah, it deals 25% bonus damage against enemies with no shield now So instead of 20, it deals 25, so it's basically at the same level as other classes, you know, like uh, Yeah, 25 is quite significant uh, And I think the important part is that if the opponent has shield it still does something, right? It still deals 15% bonus damage as opposed to zero. Because before it was just so bad because, uh, yeah, if you don't, yeah, if the opponent has shield, this basically is useless, right? At least now, if the opponent has shield, it still does 15% more. Is it good enough? Mm, I think it might be, depending on the meta. If the meta has a lot of shield, then this is not too good. But if the meta is just all aggro, then I think this could be quite good because there's no downside to it, right? Uh, it's just purely 25% bonus damage. Okay, and then we have uh, Raven's Tactic now upgraded into a Mystic Rune. And now what it says is basically it's a reworked already. Uh, and it says, when your turn starts, this actually consumes all feather to self, heal 2 HP per feather. So basically, this is kind of like a, I would say a debuff in a way, because it basically forces you to consumes all the feather so you don't have any feather to start your turn so it, it's quite important is because like the, the effects is actually very strong right uh, that is coming up so which says each hit by this actually increases the damage of its next hit by 15% and cap as 14 uh, 45 percent bonus damage so basically because uh, if you run bird you do like a lot of multi hit kind of card and so you would pretty much assume that like hitting three times and then basically the rest of the attacks will be basically 45 bonus damage 45 percent sorry 45 percent bonus damage uh which is close to half right close to 50 right so in a way it's basically similar to like a fury mode uh in s2 yeah and of course like you can do it pretty much every turn if you have a lot of multi attack card from this particular axi uh, of course, the uh, bonus will reset to zero, but still, um, yeah, I think this, I don't know. Of course, it requires very specific team building for this to work, I must say. Um, but I feel like it, it could it could work pretty well. Um, the, the downside is that you really have to, yeah, really have to get it work in terms of getting the feather and this many hits, like multi hits thing in this axi so that you basically i'm just thinking about like triple owl kind of thing right where you're just going to like using the owl to even get the feather with the charm or something right and then just dealing massive damage uh again need some testing but quite fun 
Okay, and then finally we have this new Mystic Charm. And uh, basically this one, I think, it, yeah, again, I think this is pretty strong because it says deal 40 damage to, a uh, 40%, sorry, deal 40% damage to another random target. So basically it's plus 40% effect. I can see why it's a Mystic Charm. Basically it's just dealing 40% more. Of course, it's not useful for one-on-one, -on -one, but still, like, it, like, especially in AoE, I think this can do quite a lot of damage. Having said that though, it's not too good in bird because most of the bird's attacks are either like multi-hit or AOE, so there are actually not that many single attack card. And I think this is what kind of keeps the power level of this charm, you know, like in check, I feel. And okay, the final thing is Flamingo Hammer, I can go from uh, 5 PP to 4 PP, so that's the small change. Now we have Plant, and I think Plant has the biggest change, I feel. So uh, first of all, yes, Way of Plant uh, actually reworked in the sense that it changed to now increase max HP. Um, yeah, so not bad. Uh, I think it's yeah, kind of quite fits uh, Plants pretty well. Um, and then we have this uh, Rise and Rune now reworked, right? Still an epic rune, but now it says before the battle starts as a Forest Breath, which is the one on the right. Right to your deck, so you get one forest breath, and what it says is it has retain. Okay, and it says heal and cleanse all allies. If there's at least one non debuff a uh, ally axis, so one non debuff ally axis. Okay, so uh, meaning if yeah, if of course all your axes are poisoned, then yeah, you won't get this effect. But usually you'll get this effect right if you have at least one non debuffed axis. Um, and I assume this is after the cleanse as well, so right? So it's very likely that that will happen. And what will happen is that apply sleep for three turns to one random enemy, XC. So yeah, this is definitely some sleep synergy. And of course it has retained, so you can you know, choose when you play it. And of course it doesn't have banish, so you can play it kind of over and over again. Yeah, so I think it's good, but of course it slows down your you know deck rotation, so that's one drawback. Um, but it does have the sleep, it does have the cleanse. Uh, the heal is not significant, I must say. It's just okay, but not that much. But I think it's the cleanse and the sleep that matters. So I think the power level of Forest Breath is actually not that strong. But uh, there's another thing is that once per turn, okay, so there's uh, like for the second half of this rune basically, right, once per turn, when an ally is cleansed, so in a way it's coupled with uh, Forest Breath because, you know, Forest Breath can cleanse but of course you can have use other cards to cleanse as well so once per turn you can add a forest wrath to your hand when an ally is cleansed so forest wrath is a card which has retained also then it says target any enemy deals 70 damage and then deal 10 bonus damage per other forest wrath card in your hand of course it has retained and it has banished as well so meaning once you use it it's gone um, yeah, so, but it has retained me, and you can keep a lot of Forest Wrath cards in your hand and then, you know, do burst damage. Uh, let's say if you have like five of these in your hand or something, right, then the yeah, first one will do 120 and then 110, uh, 111, uh, sorry, 100, then 110 and then 100 and then 90 and so, so on. So, of course, the more you use, then the less effective it is, but you probably want to keep like a few in your hand every time anyway, because it is a one cost card. So basically, imagine you just have get, basically every turn get a one cost deal 120 card, can be pretty good. Um, yeah, and of course, can be used for burst damage at late game as well. Um, yeah, because then you have like say three of these, then you do 120, 110, and then 100 damage. To finish our opponent off during Blood Moon, or uh, not during, but yeah, basically during Blood Moon, like at the end of the, uh, of yeah, when the opponents have very low HP. So I think this could be one way of playing this. So yeah, I think it's an interesting change, and we'll see how actually like people can um, make a team around this kind of mechanic. Okay, next we have Leaf Cloak and uh, basically just a small change from 15 to 20% less damage. So it's definitely a good buff. Maybe it will allow Leafy team to get there because basically uh, it's a Leaf enabler in a way. And uh, it allows the Leaf Cloak actually to live a bit longer. 
Okay, and then we have uh, Miracle Leaf, which is now an epic rune, and it now says, okay, so gain one leaf when your turn starts. So this is quite significant. Again, more of a leafy synergy thing, uh, but it doesn't have to be leafy as well. Um, it says this Axis attack deal one bonus damage per leaf. Okay, so basically maximum is 10 bonus damage, which is really not a lot because it doesn't have the um, double thing anymore. But it does have this, which says if this Axie has at least 5 leaves before attacking, deal 20% bonus damage. And I don't know about the 20%, okay sure, like 20% is okay, but like you've seen like other classes can deal like 25% bonus damage without any, like or without much you know, condition, or any condition. May they might have some drawback, but you know, they can just do the damage right away, but in this case, on Miracle Relief you have to set up quite a bit with 5 leaves um, and then it only deals 20% more of course okay sure you still have the bonus damage as well yeah, from the leaf but still um, yeah I, I don't know uh, because you don't like in this kind of team you probably don't care too much about the healing just because you just want to deal damage so yeah the healing from a leaf might not be significant yeah, so I don't know, but maybe people can make like a leafy team or maybe even like some sort of multi-attack thing to make use of the bonus damage. Um, yeah, but still quite hard to see, but maybe, yeah, definitely there are creative XD players out there that could make this rune work. Okay, and then we have a mystic rune. Um, sorry, okay, so we have the mystic rune and it is the healing pulse. And now what it does is, is well, this is probably one of the biggest um, in terms of the new runes because uh, yeah, it just have an insane effect, I feel. Uh, okay, so first of all, is this actually heals 20% bonus HP. Sure, this doesn't sound too exciting, but this is overheal amount granted by this actually converts to shield so if you overheal basically you are doing shield um i'm not too sure if the 20 percent goes into overheal i would assume so just because it heals you know hp but then this is the if you overheal right let's say if you are a maximum hp you can still heal right it still counts as overheal and then basically the heal cards become a shield card with 20% bonus. That's what I assume it works. I haven't tested it out, but maybe if it is, I think it is very strong. And that's not it. It's because over here amount granted by this Axie also converts to damage to one random enemy. Wow. So instead of just like healing, uh, instead of just shielding, like heal turn to shield, but also to damage. Imagine you have like a you know, 60 heal card basically it becomes a 60 shield plus 60 damage card that's how i see it of course assuming you're at full hp wow uh so yeah i can see sustain now now find another way in which you can actually you know deal damage and also shield by only using healing cards so yeah i can i can see this this one could be pretty strong uh, of course, I haven't tested it out. Maybe it's just not going to work. I don't know, but I feel like it is going to work uh, in some way. But just have to think about how, you know, how to have an Axie that basically have a lot of healing card. Um, of course, the main one that I can think about is actually Strawberry Shortcake because you can actually keep a lot of strawberries and then do a burst damage kind of thing that way. Um, yeah, so I can see this could be quite promising. Okay, and then we have uh, Oak Bud, which is a Mystic Charm. So that's the only new charm, I think. And it can be put on Attack and Shield cards. So it says Shield card heals the target equal to 30% shield granted. So very interesting. So Shield uh, also gives heal, basically. Um, uh, or if you put in an Attack card, then Attack card also heals the owner equal to 30% of unblocked damage, right? Note that it's unblocked damage, but still. Um, yeah, attack also heals, not too bad. Uh, the interesting synergy is between you know the this Mystic Rune and this Mystic Charm, so healing pulse and oak bud. Because then, let's say if you are at full HP, then that just means you get extra shield, and you also uh, heal. Of course, yes, if you are full HP, it doesn't heal. But then, yeah, I don't know if it, the heals becomes extra damage. I would assume. Uh, yeah, because yeah, if it's overhealing, right, then it'll be basically turns into shield and extra damage. 
So I don't know the synergy between, uh, like the interaction between these two things, uh, the runes and the charm. But I think it could be a pretty broken combo. Uh, okay, I shouldn't use the word broken, but it could be a pretty overpowered combo, I feel. Okay, and then Resage, I think it used to be 5 PP and now changed to 4 PP. Okay, then we have Aqua. Aqua, again, we have Aqua changed from 10 to 15% extra damage. So, not bad. Um, the bonus damage increase. Um, and then, okay, Blunt Teeth. Uh, yeah, never really seen play. Now changed from third, like, basically deals 30% less to now deal 15% less. Um, still quite a big uh penalty but maybe it is good enough now that like if you just have a ramp team any attack card basically grants one bonus energy fragment okay and then we have hearty warrior now upgraded to an epic rune now yeah, which i think is fair because it is pretty strong during 25 percent but only if the target has um now well now changed from 60 percent to 50 percent I guess the uh, you know, bigger or greater or equal to well, this doesn't make too much of a difference but it's basically now it can trigger uh, even though the opponent basically has lower HP yeah so I think it's a good change um, but compared to other epic rune is yeah, actually I think it's still pretty good because like during 25% um, it's almost as good I feel uh, okay, then we have a giant bubble. The text never changed, so that's why I made it. I didn't make it bigger. Uh, but the card text actually changed, and I actually don't understand um, that w the the text. So I never tested it out. But just want to put this out here. If anyone knows what it actually means or what it actually does, then let me know in the comments below. Um, yeah, it just says shield or allies, but it doesn't have any shield for this card, so I'm not too sure what that means. And it says allies actually gain four bubbles per energy spent. So yeah, this is again I'm not so sure what I mean. Like it used to be one bubble, right? Now four bubble per energy spent is just a bit crazy. So maybe they don't mean that. I don't know. Um Yeah, so so that's the big question mark for me. Okay, let's just get into the other runes and charms. Uh okay, so Bloodlust is back. Uh, and we have, uh, yeah, so still basically it's pretty much the old bloodlust where it says this axis single attack steals 15 HP and this axis AOE and multi hit attack steals 5 HP per hit. So yeah, it's just a uh, big swing uh, during basically 15 extra damage and then also healing as well. So that's why it's a mistake rune. Uh, Quite like it. Uh, just bring back those simple play style. We just have a strong rune. Just keep attacking. Um, yeah, dealing massive damage and then healing a bit as well. Um, and then we have a new charm, which is Tidal Wave. And very interesting because the design is basically that this out any single attack card, and this card deals twenty percent sl uh, slash the splash damage. So this splash damage, well, it just fits Aqua very well, and actually it's kind of what you expect as well because splash damage basically deal damage to all other targets based on damage on the main target. So uh, you hit the main target and then uh, you actually do extra damage, so a bit of damage, in this case 20% of the damage to all other targets. So effectively it's kind of like a 40% plus 40% effect already if you are of course early game uh, opponent has 3 axes. Because you hit one axis and then you deal 20% to the other two. Uh, of course, okay, the added uh, upside is that it also deals with summons, I think, because it's all other targets. Uh, the only thing I'm not too sure is that is it all just opponents or because. Yeah, so I'm not too sure because all other targets, right? That, that's a bit confusing because it, I can imagine there are cards that can, you know, hit your own uh, axis as well. So maybe. Your own Axie might take the damage as well. If that's the case, then that's not as good. Haven't tested it out, but yeah, still. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, and of course, it's a Mystic, so uh, I can see that this can do a lot of damage. And uh, finally for Aqua, uh, the, the Paralyzing Flurryfish now changed from 5 PP to 4 PP as for the other uh, classes. Okay, then for Reptile, 
Way of Reptile now changed from 3% to 5% healing. Uh, so healing 5% of the max HP. So yeah, not a bad change. And then Poison Touch. Uh, so yeah, the reason why I make it uh, not so, as big is I think card text is exactly the same, or the rune text is exactly the same, except that it is now a rare rune, meaning you can put multiple copies of it, and of course you can play it in the rare era, but it doesn't have solo as well, yeah, so that's the good side. So maybe they think that this is just not good enough in terms of the power level as an epic, so they just put it as a rare. I'm not sure, but I feel like poison might be quite good in rare era, that's what I would say. Mm, but maybe I'm wrong, uh, but I think at the beginning of the rare era, definitely, it historically has always been like poison is a pretty good, pretty strong, but maybe not the strongest. But of course now with poison touch, I think they could get there for the rare era. Okay, then we have the um, Venom Master now an epic rune, and it kind of changed a bit. So first of all, it says before the battle starts, as a Venom burst to your deck. So this is a new card. Um, I'll get into that, but first, uh, let's continue with the rune text, and it says this axis attack deals um, minus fifteen percent damage. So meaning, uh, I guess fifteen percent less damage, and then apply one poison per hit. So. There are two changes in terms of the final part, right? So first of all, it goes from 25% to 15%, so it's less um, penalty, right? So the reduction is less, but then it only applies one poison as opposed to two per hit. Having said that, I assume if it's multi-hit, it can still, you know, do multiple poisons, uh, just because at one poison per hit, if you do like six hits with Little Owl, let's say, then you do put six poison, but I don't think people will play Little Owl uh, in a poison build. Or uh, if even if they do, I don't think they will get it to six times. But who knows? Uh, okay, so let's get to the Venom Burst. So Venom Burst is a three cost card. So note that's three cost, so it's quite significant. So you probably only want to play it in late game. It is has retain. So let's target any enemy. Do a pure damage per poison stack on the target. So if the poison, uh, if the enemy has forty poison stack, it basically does three hundred and twenty damage. So basically, I imagine, imagine it's basically one shots everything. But that's not it. Uh, it says, then remove and equally spreads its poison stacks to other enemy axes. So this is the part where I'm not too sure how it works. Let's say if you actually one shot your opponent's axe. Do those poisons that still exist and then get spread? If it is, I think it is very strong. If it doesn't, then it's a bit not as good. Uh, that's how I feel. Uh, yeah, because yeah, you, I can imagine you can just like stack up one uh, poison stack on one axis and then use this to kind of spread it to the other ones. Um, yeah, we'll have to test and see how this one actually works out. Okay, and then show shot um, change. From basically just a small buff, basically because it's never really seen play, right? So they just buff the damage. So instead of ten pure damage now, they go from fifteen pure damage. Uh, yeah, for uh, any secret or any ally secret triggered. So not bad. And also, uh, heal instead of ten is now healing fifteen HP. So again, um, small buff, but could, I don't think it's that significant. Um, but maybe it can go in a sustain, but I don't think it's good enough. I feel uh, there are just stronger runes out there, I feel. Okay, and then well, one of the stronger runes, I feel, is basically prehistoric armor. Okay, so everything is the same except that now it's changed that whenever hit, this actually heals 10 HP as opposed to 8. So small buff, but I think it's already very strong. So buffing it even further, I think, could... Yeah, could make it work. But having said that, sure, like, it is strong. But I don't. Yeah, but we really haven't seen play at the highest of the level. So maybe this will push it up there. Okay, and finally for Raptor, we have the uh, Mystic Rune, and it's a Paralyzing Fang. So this one, it says this axis single and AOE attacks apply doubt for two turns, then deal one damage. Now, pure damage per debuff stack and debuff turn. Okay, so uh, it counts both the debuff stack and debuff turn um, on the targets. Okay, so I think they add up basically and yeah, just deal one damage uh, per stack or per turn. 
uh, and it caps at 40. So of course it's mostly a poison kind of thing because usually you don't have that many stacks of debuffs on the opponent other than poison. So imagine you have 40 uh, poison, then yeah, the AOE or the single attack basically deals 40 extra damage, which is very significant, I think. But that's why I feel like it is a uh, pretty strong, I guess, finisher card. I'm thinking things like Gilla. Yeah, could be pretty good. Uh, the Doubt may be good against Sustain, I must say, but usually probably not as significant. But I think, let's say you put it on a Gilla, uh, basically it just make Gilla, makes Gilla quite a bit stronger just because it deals um, extra damage yeah so that's how yeah this is uh, I think makes poison basically stronger and I quite like it because poison really hasn't seen that much uh, you know in terms of the highest level so maybe this will push poison up there um, okay so there are actually more in terms of poison yeah in terms of reptile because I actually forgot about these ones um, so okay so first of all is um, Venom uh, the Viper Venom, now uh, a small change, but I would say quite significant because uh, before the bonus, it deals one bonus poison if the opponent has no poison, but now actually if the target has less than 15, it will still get the one bonus. So in a way, it probably in the uh, early game, uh, Viper Venoms will do two poisons as opposed to one. And then we have the Reptile Energy Drink. M. So now, because again, never really seen play, so now at least it's changed to 20 HP, uh, turned from 20 HP to 15 HP loss, which is still, I feel like, mm, but I think now it's fairer because 15% loss is not that much. Uh, fifth, I mean, 15 HP loss is not that much, but then gaining 6 blood spike is actually quite significant, I feel. Uh, yeah, even though it go from 5 to 6, but yeah, I think it's really going up there, but of course that they really have to balance it up. I was thinking 10 blood spike, but I think 10 is a really a bit too much. Okay, so then we have another new charm, which is the Acid Spray. And this one applies 4 poisons per energy cost to one random enemy Axie. So, yeah, it, it, this one, yeah, you can see why it's good, right? It's just apply 4 poison, and this per energy cost. If you do like a Gilla, you put like 8, but first you usually get you probably don't want to put this, you want to put the other Mystic Charm. But yeah, I can imagine, yeah, yeah, just putting it on any, oh actually sorry, yeah, it's only on debuff card, so yeah, forgot about that part, so that's why I can't put it on an attack card. But yeah, any debuff card, so I'm just thinking, basically any poison card, right, it just deals for more poison. Yeah, so why not, basically, right, this really just push poisons quite a bit. Uh, better so yeah i'm really hoping that poisons will see play but of course i personally don't actually like playing against poison but poison deserves some loves that's how i feel okay then we have the mech uh, and of course the mech doesn't have the charm so it's only the runes so let's just see so it's actually sim very similar um so for the secret classes uh, the buff goes from five percent to ten percent um, so yeah, so for trap nullifier, five percent to ten percent. Okay, zap so armor actually uh, get a bit of a buff, so it's an epic rune now. It says deal twenty percent bonus damage, so you can see right, it's uh, a lot of the runes are dealing twenty percent, so twenty percent is kind of like a base level if you're on an attack, uh, kind of, you know, kind of axy. And actually, it says takes twenty percent less damage when shielded. So I think quite significant this uh, change of twenty percent. So meaning you actually want this to be like an maybe hybrid kind of thing, right? Meaning you do a bit of shielding, do a bit of attacking. Having said that, don't think there's been that many uh, I guess archetypes that does this kind of thing. So maybe Zap Emma can enable like this kind of mid range like sh shielding and attacking kind of gameplay because most of the time we just see full on ag aggro or full on shielding. Maybe Zap Emma can make it work in terms of like a hybrid kind of thing. Okay, and then we have Lens of Truth. Uh, again, similarly, um, they are changing to 20% bonus damage because their 15% is just not good enough. I think 20 is kind of like the base at this point. Uh, so a lot of buffs, and you can see a lot of buffs in terms of the damage. So I feel like the game actually will probably go faster because uh, there's a lot more aggro, I feel, it's because there's just a lot of buff in terms of bonus damage, in terms of percentage. 
Okay, finally for Matt, we have Last Stand. And this one, wow, um, I don't know what to say because it's very strong. Uh, okay, let me just read the card text because it says, Once per battle, okay, it only can do it once. It says, if this actually would die, it survives with 1 HP, cannot die. I right? cannot die during that turn, I would assume. Right? And its ability gains 50% bonus stats. Actually, so it cannot die uh, until the end of the next turn, right? It just cannot die. I think it basically has this buff. So meaning if you have poison, whatever, right, it just will not die. I assume that's what it means. Yeah, and the abilities, meaning all the cards, has 50% bonus stats. So imagine uh, you are just trying to kill this Axie. It just survives 1 HP. It's like 1 on 1 kind of thing, right? It survives 1 HP, then they do massive damage to you, KO you, and then, yeah, that's usually how it goes, I can imagine, for this kind of, uh, yeah, for, for Axies running this rune. Because basically it just buys you one extra turn. And that one extra turn, you deal extra damage as well. Of course, it can be shielded, but usually, of course, it's damage uh, to basically finish the opponent off. So, yeah, I quite like this one. So let's just see if anyone you will know, make use of this. It's actually, in a way, quite similar to the the bird one that we see, the sacred uh, one. I forgot what's yeah, the full name, right? The, where basically it allows you to basically heal back quite a bit. So it's kind of surviving for one turn, but not exactly. Uh, but this one literally allows you to basically buy you one more turn um, yeah so I quite like this okay and then we have Dawn so for Dawn uh, again uh, Divine Ring 5% to 10% uh, small change and then Rejuvenate now Epic Rune um, and it's just changed from 10% to 15% in terms of the heal and shielding card and apply Cadenza so I think I quite like it um, still not too sure if it's strong enough because you know 15% for healing and shielding, whereas you know other cards have like twenty percent bonus damage. Yeah, but the cleanser might be yeah again like very matchup dependent as well, so that's why I don't think it is good enough. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, then we have healing force. I don't know why it needs a buff because it's already seen a lot of play, but it actually got a buff because now they change the wording in such a way that it says when your turn starts for each alive axis or each alive allies not just axis right? i think summons as well each alive allies in your team heal 8 hp to your team all right so meaning for each alive allies it heals 8 so if you have three axes it heals 24 to your team that's how i'm reading it i'm like you sure i don't know and then deal 4 damage to all enemies right so they're still dealing 12 damage so the damage part is the same but the healing part change I don't know, I haven't tested it out, so actually I'm not 100% sure, but that's how I read this text. Uh, maybe they'll change it back to the original, that's what I assume will happen, because this healing 24 is too much, right? 24 is per XC, right? So that means 72 healing plus 12 damage or something? I don't know, I don't know. I, th I think I'm wrong, but uh, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, last one, actually no, that's not the last one for Dawn, but uh, last one for this slide for Dawn is uh, Heaven's Echoes. So this one, um, just a small, small change from 15% to 20% in terms of uh, bonus damage and also 15 shield to 20 shield. Maybe push it such that uh, it might see some play. I think it already sees some small amount of play, but mm, yeah, maybe now it could be pretty good just because 20% bonus damage is quite significant, I must say. Um, yeah, because like, the other runes also get 20% and this 20% also stacks other runes as well. So that's why I can see like two different, like this could be one of the support axes, right? And then uh, you use the one damage dealer to deal massive damage with the 20% bonus. Okay, and finally we have Celestial Might for Dawn and it's the Mystic. And okay, it says this Axis ability gain 25 bonus stats when played. Oh my god. So basically, whenever you play it, you gain 25. So basically, it's a plus 25 effect for every card in for this Axis. That's how I read it. Uh, or maybe the, the card only gain 25% after it's played. I'm not too sure. Uh, but and also says this axis uh, abilities made in the cards, all right? Uh, Banish after they're used uh, after they're played twice, uh, two times. So it also basically 
just do a lot of effects it could be heating it could be shielding it could be attacking whatever it does right and then after it's done it just thins out your deck right the, the cards are just gone so wow um i don't know i think of course it requires quite a lot of uh, deck building i quite like this kind of rune because actually it's a lot has to do with the deck uh, team building uh, and this basically this kind of rune enables new type of you know new ways in which you can build a team so yeah i'm pretty sure some people will find some way of abusing this rune both for the bonus stats but also for the banished effect okay finally we have dusk and uh, okay so dark flame five percent to ten percent um and then we have curse ritual um three damage to five damage so a bit of a buff mm, not bad i think uh, you might see some curse stuff in rare era then we have the wicked ward which i have not seen at all and now it's an epic uh but of course this is actually like a quite a big change and now it says whenever an ally plays a card that applies curse right not just yourself like not just the, this actually is any ally so i can imagine like a you know curse team put this in like uh, even any other ally play a curse you gain 12 shield meaning each turn i can imagine you you are gaining 36 shield at least because you if you are not almost at least but like if you are say just playing all the curse card like the jinx stuff right then yeah you just very easily gain 36 shield for all allies is it significant that's the problem right um i guess especially against aoe it could be pretty good but 36 shield is i guess still not that good um yeah so i don't know yeah so but we'll see uh maybe it's it's good enough f uh, for very very concentrated you know curse build but yeah i don't think the 12 shield is enough um that's how i feel okay and then finally we have this new mystic rune for dusk which is called demon soul very interesting it says when played this axis ability consumes 66 hp from the lowest hp ally so basically it takes the hp so i guess getting the soul from an ally and then they so i assume this means the this axis abilities meaning this axis card gains six percent base stats so whenever you play you gain six percent base stats and then you basically you keep playing it and then it will just keep rolling up but the downside is that it does consume 66 hp which is actually quite a lot for just six percent base stats so that is my worry uh yeah i guess i'm not a good enough team builder to think about like and at this moment how we can abuse this rune at this point but uh, i'm sure throughout the season or maybe like even during the pre-season when people are testing there will be new ideas that comes up and uh, obviously i'll keep you updated if i see anything interesting okay so this is pretty much it for this update so very long one but uh, there is quite a lot of uh, new runes and charms and i hope uh, yeah you're also looking forward to playing more x infinity origins of course this is only live on the origin beta server so uh yeah we'll just have to wait and see there will be further changes and i'll keep you all updated if there are further changes before season three so thanks again for watching and i'll see you in the next video